What if it turned out better than you could have even imagined? Every now and then I hear a quote that profoundly affects me when I most need it. Something that changes the way I think about my life. So what if it did turn out better than you could have even imagined? Are you open to the possibility? Because if you give me the next eight or so minutes of your life, I'm going to try and offer you a perspective that might at least help us all start the process of finding out. There are so many reasons that we might not progress the way that we want with our running, but we're going to focus on us and the aspects that we control. And here's how we're going to approach it. I'm going to talk through the why why we might limit ourselves or not make progress. Then the how, what behaviors we might see that lead to the lack of progress. But then we're gonna talk through the solutions, how we become the absolute best versions of ourselves, how we can see if it might turn out even better than we imagined. Let's start with our brains and the very reason we have one, to keep us alive. So before the world as we knew it existed, our brains were responsible for our safety, for keeping us free from pain and alive. It's literally hardwired into us and has been for thousands of years. So when we introduced over the last 100 years or so the concept of pain for fun in the form of running, our brains or the subconscious part cannot comprehend. Pain for fun. And then layer on top of that our ego, our sense of self-importance or self-esteem. While the brain subconsciously protects, the ego consciously protects, we worry about what we might look like if we did allow ourselves to believe. What if we went for it and it didn't work out? We can control how others view us. And if we protect ourselves just a little bit, then we're protecting this idea of our ego being bruised but there are better ways to build and protect self-esteem, which we'll deal with in a bit. The third reason we might not be running how we want is that we're making the wrong comparisons. We're looking outward at other people on different journeys and at different points on their journey. Everybody makes progress in different ways and at different rates. So it's flawed logic to even look at someone similar to you in age or ability or time they've been running. There are just too many factors at play to assume that they're going to respond or progress in the same way that you do. You know who you should be comparing yourself to? It's two people. Yourself yesterday, always striving to be better, and you in the future, the person you aspire to be. The rest, irrelevant. So what would these limiting behaviours actually look like in real life? Well, let's see how many of these that we've all said or done. And I'm speaking from a rich history of these types of behaviours, by the way. How about consciously overtraining? Knowing that you're running too much in a week or in a session or even pushing too hard. Because then, if you perform poorly in a race, there's an excuse that you can give yourself. Pushing too hard is an absolute classic running hard right up to a race and expecting to do well? Or have you ever indulged in negative self-talk? My classic was always, I'm a triathlete because my body won't let me just be a runner. My legs can't handle it. That is a load of BS. And why be so harsh on myself? I'm a triathlete because I'm pretty good at it. And with a bit of time and patience, I know I could just run train too if I wanted to. Other classics are too old, started too late, injury prone, don't have time, all negative takes on such a joyful experience. And don't worry, solutions are coming. I don't drink, but lots of people like a drink or like staying up late, even if it costs much needed sleep. And we all know what foods are good and bad for us, so we don't even need to go there. The fact that we know the right choices and we don't take them, they protect us from poor performances or frustration at lack of progress. Well, I did have a few beers or I did stay up late, but what if you or we 
made a commitment to do the right thing. What if it could turn out better than we ever imagined? Here's what I think we can do, and it's a three-step process. Firstly, is to zoom right out and look at this in the macro, as in the big picture beyond your running. The chances of us even existing on Earth are about zero. And yet, here we are. And, as someone more articulate than me put it, most of us tiptoe our way through life hoping we'll make it safely to death. What kind of a deal is that? The way I see it, we've all won the lottery to be here, so I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try and squeeze the juice. I'm going to keep trying to identify the ways that I limit myself, and I'm going to remove those limiters. Obviously, not the ones that actually keep me alive, but the rest. And in running, that means letting myself believe I can. I can run further, or I can run faster or more. I'm going to be smart with it, but we owe it to ourselves to at least see. Then zoom in a bit to the mezzo, our lives. And if we're lucky, we get about 75 summers, 75 autumns, winters and springs. That's not a lot when you say it like that. So we have to make the most of each of these trips around the sun. What is training without joy? Or what's joy without hard times? What are hard times when there are no payoffs? It's understanding the yin and the yang of running, the ups and the downs, the seasons. And knowing that if you just do what you can to stay in the game, there are good times ahead. Just stay in the game. Believe you're a runner. And what about the micro? The things that you can do daily to make progress happen. It's about building a stack of undeniable proof that you are who you say you are. Make promises to yourself and keep them. I will wake up to run tomorrow. I will stretch after a run. I will finish this session or this race. The more you fulfill commitments to yourself, the stronger your self-worth becomes. You actually allow yourself to believe that you're capable of incredible things. Your repeated actions become habits, formed so deep over time that eventually you won't know how not to run or how not to treat yourself positively. We need to take care and believe in ourselves before we can help other people. It's why we put the oxygen masks on ourselves on a plane first. So, if you want to make true progress in running and in life, remember this. Pain is absolutely necessary and is vital for growth. Don't shy away from it, harness it in the right ways. And the ego isn't necessary in as much as we can keep it under control by surrounding ourselves with people better than us. People who make us push beyond what we ever thought possible of ourselves. You show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And finally, only compare yourself to the you yesterday and the you that you aim to be. All else is irrelevant in the grand scheme. We exist for the blink of an eye, so make it a damn good blink. Now all you've got to do is get up, get out, and get it. Cheers.